So every once in a while on our radio show, we do a, um, a thing we call frequently asked questions. Did Anthony Weiner's last name have anything to do? This is in your specialty, I think. This is my specialty? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love what are called aptonyms. You all know what aptonyms are? It's really a name that's apt, essentially, right? So back in the old days when you got a last name based on what you did, everybody had an apt name. But then time went on and, and names weren't quite, um, you know, are, are very, very different from that. So my very favorite was um, a young woman whose name was Paige, P-A-I-G-E, Worthy, and she was a fact checker at a magazine. So something had to be Paige Worthy. So I thought that was great. <laughs> Wiener, however, uh, uh, Yes. I mean, what do you... <laughs> Andrew Johnson wants to know, um, my wife is going to give birth to our first child next month. Congratulations. Um, what should we name it to help ensure future success? I think that's pretty obvious. Stephen? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good. When conducting field research in impoverished neighborhoods, uh, how do people in said neighborhoods respond? You know, that's a great question because how people respond depends a lot on... Uh, the professionalism with which you approach them is my co-author, Sudhir Venkatesh, the same one I did the, the prostitution research with. So he did research with me, and he had never been to the inner city in his life. But the very first project, the first year of graduate school at the University of Chicago, was to go and uh, for a class on survey methods to administer a survey in the inner city. So he and two or three of his, of his peers had to write a survey and then go administer it. Uh, and so these guys, I've got to stress, they were incredibly well-meaning but completely incompetent. So they put together a survey, which you're going to go knock on a door and administer, and I think it had something like 80 questions on it. It was 15 pages long. It took 90 minutes to administer. So you imagine you're you know, someone in a housing project, someone knocks on your door, and 90 minutes later, you're still answering questions. The very first question on that survey was, how does it feel to be poor and black? And the choices were A, very good, B, somewhat good, <laughs> C, neither good nor bad, D, somewhat bad, E, very bad. Okay, so he goes down in the afternoon, he knocks on doors, and there's nobody there. So he ends up hearing voices coming from the third or fourth floor, and so he goes up. This is back in 1989, and he goes up to the third or fourth floor, and uh, he comes around the corner, and there are, I don't know, nine or ten young African-American men shooting dice. Okay, it turns out this is the local crack gang. Okay, the peak of the crack epidemic in Chicago. And you can imagine their surprise when this clipboard-toting, ponytailed, tie-dye-wearing guy comes into the fourth floor of the housing project. And one of them leaps up and puts a gun to his head and says, what are you doing in our stairwell? And Sidhu so says, uh, well, I, uh, I've come to administer a survey on your economic life. Uh, and eventually one of them says, well, let's just hear the first question on your damn survey then. <laughs> So Sidhir says, how does it feel to be poor and black? And uh, he says to me later, you know, it really turned out that, that answers A through E weren't sufficient, that I really needed another answer, F. And that, that answer began with the letter F and ended with the word U. <laughs> so anyway, they didn't know what to do, and they held him hostage in the stairwell overnight. And it wasn't until morning... Uh, when the gang leader, JT, a guy named JT, showed up, and uh, he had been to college, and he looked at Sudhir, and he understood that he was, he was crazy. But he sent Sudhir home, and, and then Sudhir uh, went home. He took a shower, and uh, he thought about it. And he realized, I have a lot better questions than to ask than the, the stuff we had on that survey now that I spent some time with these guys. And he went back to the housing project. He found JT, and he said, you know, I had so much fun hanging out with your guys last night. I wonder if you let me do it again tonight. And JT thought it was crazy, but he ended up taking Sudhir under, under his wing and really spending you know, seven years, Sudhir did, doing research in, in the neighborhood. And I think it really depends a lot, understanding how you treat them. And, and by the time Sudhir was done, he was just part of the community. He had, he had information and access and, and respect of the community uh, to the point that probably no other researcher has, has ever had.